So now that we have finished creating our survey, there are going to be a few things that we want to do just to finalise it so that it's ready to uh, send out. Um, you might see this uh, thing at the top where it says this survey does not meet web accessibility standards. Essentially because Qualtrics works a lot with companies who do market research, they just want to ensure that any type of participant, whether they have visual impairments, etc., can access and use the survey well. The fact that it doesn't meet it means that if you do have any participants with visual impairments, they might struggle to answer the survey. However, if you're not particularly interested in this, um, then it is fine. And the majority of the time, and the majority of surveys I make, they don't meet web accessibility standards and they're okay. You can preview the survey, and this is basically the best bet of seeing how your survey looks. And you want to make sure that um, you have a look at how respondents can use the survey on a mobile phone. Uh, because the majority of respondents now might answer your survey on their a mobile device. So you just want to kind of have a little go at how it all looks and is presented on a mobile device. So yeah, this is all looking fine. So yeah, I'm happy with the way that it looks. So I'm going to ignore the warning of this survey does not work, meet web accessibility standards. Um, also, you're probably going to want to add some sort of debrief uh, for when participants finish the survey. And you can do that by selecting survey options. And uh, you, at the end, of, you can put a default end of survey message or a custom end of survey message, which is probably what you're going to want to do because you're going to want to specify uh, your own message. And then you can just click new message. And let's call this end of survey debrief. And this um, very much looks like a word processor again. And you can just go, thank you for taking part in the survey. You want to write something like if you have any ethical concerns contact soprec at lincoln.ac.uk. You might also want to write something about what the survey was about. So the research conducted today was about. And then you want to also write something like, if you have any questions, contact. And then put your email. So now, um, when the survey's finished, they'll be presented um, with that debrief, and we can see that now. If I just ignore validation, this means that if you've had any questions where it's a false response, when you're previewing your survey, you can just skip through them. So let's just get right to the end. And you can see that that's what it brings up and how it displays your debrief. Also, uh, using this survey options, you can add things in like back buttons. So you can enable people to go back if they want to change their responses. Uh, you might not want this. You can show question numbers if you want. The save and continue uh, option basically means uh, if somebody accidentally kind of clicks X, uh, on their web browser, once they load their web browser up again, it basically takes them to the question that they're on so they don't have to start over. Um, and they're the kind of most useful things in this survey options uh, menu. Um, in the look and feel, you might want to um, edit uh, certain things. So you might want to edit your next button text or your back button text, and you can essentially edit it like what we did with the debrief and in general you can add a progress bar 
So if participants, um, if you want to show participants how far they are along in their survey, you can add this. So I'm going to put progress bar with the text and it will basically have a percentage of how far through they are in the survey. And this questions per page option, you only really use this if you haven't really added page breaks. Um, you can specify that you only want to present two questions on a page at any one time. But it is better to manually kind of go through it and use the page breaks. Next, when finalising your survey, you want to go on this tools option. And when you might move around some of your questions using these arrows uh, during creation. And this means that all your question numbers are, might be out. So like it goes from question two and then skips to question four. And you might want them to be in a bit more of a logical order. So you, to, do, to change that and to fix that, you click on tools. And then you click on auto number questions. And I most commonly use sequential numbering. But you can number it um, by block, but most commonly sequential numbering I think is the most easiest to interpret. So you click that and now you should see that all your questions are in the correct order, or your question numbers are in a chronological order. Finally, you might also want to export your survey to Word. So again you click on the tools and then you click export to Word. And you want to make sure all the boxes are ticked. And then you can click export. And if we just open that, it will probably be saved in your downloads um, folder. And it kind of presents this. Finally, one thing that you'll want to check is um, you want to delete all the responses that you've obtained by just previewing the survey. Uh, so that doesn't exist in the data. And to do this, you go on to Data and Analysis. And then you click on Tools. Then you click Delete Data. And you can click Survey Previews. And you want to tick both these boxes. And then click Delete All Survey Previews. And there you have it. You've pretty much finalised all your survey now so that it is ready to distribute.